Test.
Death. 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 Yes.
Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Advent Lutheran Church on this wonderful, auspicious day, the 60th anniversary celebration of Advent Lutheran Church. Uh, it is good to see you all here. Uh, my name's Pastor Matt, uh, and welcome. Uh, just a couple brief announcements this morning. First off, I want to um, uh, uh, give recognition to some of our special guests this morning. Uh, first off, we have, as a guest musician, uh, Patrick Hughes uh, on trumpet. Thank you for being here. Um, and then we have uh, pastors uh, uh, Gardner and Pastor Sorcek joining us this morning uh, who will be helping to lead uh, worship. Um, couple brief announcements. Uh, first off, um, here we go. Thursday night Bible study resumes as we study Bonhoeffer this Thursday at 7 p.m. by Zoom. That link is in the digital bulletin and on our website. Uh, men's breakfast is this coming Saturday, the 14th, October 14th. Coffee is ready at 7.30. Food is served at 8.30. Ping pong uh, uh, starts Tuesdays at 6.30, starting October 17th. So we've got that coming up. And then we have um, uh, uh, AED training uh, on November 5th and November 19th. Uh, the uh, defibrillator training, that will be done by Tri-County Rescue Squad by Jay Colella. He'll be here between the two services. So on those Sundays, if you would like the training, if you come to the first service, stay late. If you would like the training uh, and you go to the second service, come early. Uh, and that's the November 5th and November 19th. Um, and I guess the last note that I have here is in regards to uh, the brunch that we'll be having after service. Uh, for those who have signed up for the brunch, please pick up your place cards in the main entrance foyer uh, on your way to the all-purpose room. Are there any announcements that need to be made? All right. Uh, prayers, uh, intercession, any names to be added that uh, we can pray for in regards to the Any names to be added? L-Y-N. Victoria. 
Well, without further ado, Cleanse the thoughts of 
The first reading is from 1 Kings, chapter 8, 22 through 30. Then Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of all the assembly of Israel and spread out his hands to heaven. He said, O Lord, God of Israel, there is no God like you in heaven above or on earth beneath, keeping, uh, keeping covenant and steadfast love for your servants who walk before you with all their heart. The covenant that you keep, kept for your servant, my father David, as you declared to him, you promised with your mouth and have this day fulfilled with your hand. Therefore, O Lord, God of Israel, Keep for your servant, my father David, that which you promised him, saying, There shall never fail you a successor before me to sit on the throne of Israel. If only your children look to their way to walk before me as you have walked before me. Therefore, O God of Israel, let your word be confirmed, which you promised to your servant, my father David. But will God indeed dwell on the earth? Even heaven and the highest heaven cannot contain you, much less this house that I have built. Regard your servant's prayer and his plea. O Lord my God, heeding the cry and the prayer that your servant prays to you today, that your eyes may be open night and day toward this house, the place of which you said, My name shall be there, that you may heed the prayer that your servant prays toward this place. Hear the plea of your servant and of your people Israel when they pray toward this place. O oh, hear in heaven your dwelling place. Heed and forgive. Word of God, word of life. The psalm we read responsibly. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts. My soul, though once indeed it faints, for the cowards of the Lord. My heart and my flesh sing for joy to the living God. Even the sparrow finds a home, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young at your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Happy are those who live in your house, ever singing your praise. Happy are those whose strength is in you, in whose heart are the highways to Zion. As they go springs, the early rain also covers it with pools. They go from strength to strength. The God of gods will be seen in Zion. O Lord, God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob. Behold our shield, O God. Look on the face of your anointed. For a day of your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than live in the tents of wickedness. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. He bestows favor and honor. No good things uh, does the Lord withhold from those who walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, happy is everyone who trusts in you. The second reading from 1 Peter chapter 2. Rid yourselves, therefore, of all the malice and all guile, insincerity, envy, and all slander. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight, and, like living stones, let yourself be built into a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture, See, I am laying a Zi in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious. But for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner, 
and a stone that makes them stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Word of God, word of life. The gospel acclamation is spoken. Alleluia, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, the festival of dedication took place in Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was walking in the temple in the portico of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I have told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name testify to me, but you do not believe, because you do not belong to my sheep. My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. What my Father has given me is greater than all else, and no one can snatch it out of the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. And I do see some young ones in the congregation. So. Good morning, how are you? I am doing well, thank you for asking. I appreciate that. So today in our psalm, it says, happy are those who live in your house, ever singing your praises. Hmm. So happy are those who live, in, your is talking about God. Happy are those who live in God's house, singing your praises forever. Did you know that this place we're in right now, the church, we sometimes call God's house? You knew that? Where, where did you hear that before? You know where you just knew that? Well, you know what? If you just knew that, that's a good thing. Your gut must have told you, well, you know, we go to church and we always hear about God, so this must be God's house, and it is. So, um, huh. happy are those who dwell in God's house, singing God's praise forever. Did you know that every time I come here, it makes me happy? Yeah, yeah, it does. That's because you just know. Well, you can feel it, can't you? How about we stand up? Let's look at all these people here. I'm going to tell you right now, all these people who are here, I think I'm going to take a wild guess. But the reason why they're here is because 
when they come to this place, they're happy too. Why would we be so happy about coming to this place, this place we call God's house? It's God's house. You pray for God's house. Well, how does God feel about us? Good. Yeah, well, I would say more than good. Turn around. Look at me. So God feels good about us. How else does God feel about us? Awesome. I like that word. How else does God feel about us? Happy. Yes. Well, sometimes God will feel sad for us, too, like if we're having a really bad day. Yeah. Well, the reason why God feels all those things is because God loves us. Because God loves us. He loves each and everyone. You, 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 me, and everybody here. And not just everybody here, but everybody in the whole world. Exactly. Well, let's pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks that you love us so much that your love brings us happiness, especially when you come into, we come here to your house. Gracious God, we pray that you continue to love us and love all those around us and that we can share that love with the world. Amen. So whose house is this? Whose house is this? Whose house is this? I can't hear you. I, I can hear the little ones. Whose house is this? Oh, that's better, but I think you can do even better than that. Whose house is this? Amen. Yes, this is God's house. God resides here. We encounter God in this place. I knew that. I knew that when I first came into this place and the call committee sat me in a chair right about where I was sitting with the kids and they sat in the pews. I think they were trying to set it up to intimidate me or something. Um, my foot was going like this. But as they asked their questions, trying to get to know me, and I asked them questions, not just trying to get to know them, but to get to know all of you, I could sense in that interview that this was God's house. It was because of the people sitting here in this space. Because God's house is more than just the walls, the roof, the floor, the ceiling. What really makes God's house? The people. Jesus, at the time of the festival of the dedication, which took place in Jerusalem, it was winter. And Jesus was walking in the temple in the portico of Solomon. The dedication of the temple. In the winter, Anybody, can anybody think of a Jewish holy day that takes place during the winter? About the time of Christmas. Hanukkah, yeah. The dedication of the temple. 
The story about the dedication of the temple goes back almost 200 be years before Jesus was walking through the temple, through the portico of Solomon, during the dedication, celebrating the dedication of the temple. What had happened, that land that lies between the ancient empires of, of, of the Assyrian and Babylonian fertile crescent, Tigris, Euphrates Valley, those empires one after another that would come through and try to conquer the land, and Egypt. But then on that particular time, there was another invader that came into that land. It was the armies of Alexander the Great, the Greeks, trying to bring Hellenism, Greek culture, to the broader world. And when they came to Jerusalem, they declared that nobody was to celebrate or to practice the Jewish religion. And they took over the temple, the main temple in Jerusalem, the place to worship God. And they put up an altar to Zeus and made sacrifices And in the oppression that was forced upon the Jewish people at that time, a tribe, a family called the Maccabees headed a revolt. They took over the temple, and the temple needed to be rededicated to God. But in the dedication, there was only enough oil to light the lamps for one day, and it would take eight days to get more oil for the lamps. And the oil lasted for eight days. It was a miracle. And so that's what was being celebrated. With the dedication of the temple, Hanukkah. What is the significance of that lamp? What was that significance of the lamp in the temple? The significance of the lamp in the temple is that that flame represents the fire of God's love. The fire of God, God's presence, as God appeared to Moses in the burning bush and God appeared in a pillar of fire to protect God's people as they fled out of Egypt from Pharaoh. And so once that lamp is lit, it is supposed to stay lit. And God made sure of it. To this day, every temple, every synagogue has such a flame, an eternal flame. given that Jesus was Jewish, and we being Christians, we happen to have the same tradition. Can you see the candle over there? Do you see it? Gail, who uh, is our chair for worship, and our deacon is one of the people responsible in making sure that that candle stays lit. There's special, what are those candles, the, uh, the special candles called that we use? They're just eternal. Seven day devotional candles, eternal candles, so they last seven days. So they're made for that purpose. Anybody take a guess as to when that candle was first lit? When God was here, yeah. And it stays lit. Very good, Timmy. That was not quite the answer I was looking for. But it, it, I think it was a better answer than the one I was looking for. Uh,
because that's the absolute truth. 60 years ago, we lit that candle. We lit that candle. And I say we, that, yes, our charter members lit that candle, but we, because we're part of the body of Christ that is this church, that we've inherited that candle. You know, fire's a primal thing. We tend to forget it because we don't necessarily see the fires that continue to keep our houses warm and cook our food. We found technology to basically take fire and harness it in different ways we don't quite recognize as a flame. But fire gives us light. It sustains us chemically within our, our bodies. There is the combustion of carbon that we eat that we, in the food we put in our mouths. The very breath of God within us. And that candle has stayed lit. And that flame that I felt at that interview, in the next interview with the call committee, in the next interview with the, uh, with the um, church council, and then when I came here to be with you to preach a call sermon and a vote, and I remember the gift basket that was brought out to me, And the warm expressions, the warmth of that love, encountering God's love in this place. And that love has only grown brighter since I've been here and I've gotten to know you. I know it's the same flame of love through this body of Christ, community of Christ, community of God, that my my colleagues and predecessors experienced in their time here. But I got to tell you, the flame that burns in that candle, that sheds out light, that's an actual, some congregations have an actual, have a, a, a bulb, like a flickering light bulb. We haven't done that. There's nothing wrong with doing that. It's still something burning at some point along the way, but, you know, we can actually see the candle flicker and the light come out and the love that we experience being in community with one another, experiencing God's love. But that light, that flicker, goes out beyond the walls of this church. It goes out into the community and it goes out into the world. and that we are bearers of that flame as we bring it out into the world, the love that we are nourished with here, into our daily lives and into the lives of the people we interact with. That they would know the love of God through us. That they would be drawn closer to God's house. So yeah, the flame's been burning for 60 years. And in a way, we too celebrate this day, the dedication of this house of worship. May it continue to burn for another 60 years. May it burn eternally. Amen.
peace of the Lord be with you all. Let us share the peace with one another. Okay, now um, let us profess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now, oh. Trusting in the transformative power of God's loving spirit, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. We give thanks to you for the members and the ministry of this congregation, for those who had the vision to begin this congregation, those who sustain its present ministry and those who will carry its mission forward into the future. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of all grace, you are the source of life and joy. Strengthen the resolve of your church throughout the world, that together we press on toward the, go the goal of your heavenly call in Jesus Christ. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of all creation, you plant and nourish the earth as your own precious vineyard. Bless fields and orchards and the hands of those who labor in them, that your people are fed with an abundant harvest of good fruit. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of all the earth, you desire peace and justice between nations and peoples. We pray especially for Israel as it has been attacked by Hamas. Guide leaders of nations, states, provinces, and cities that they faithfully govern your people with wisdom, integrity, and compassion. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of all compassion, in Christ you lovingly poured yourself out like wine for your people. Have mercy on all who mourn, who struggle with their mental health, who cry out for justice, who hunger, and all in any need, especially Amy, Maylin, Victoria, Bella, Leslie, Natalie, Sally, Jose, Don, Janie, Cindy, Jerry. Patrick, Mommy, Bill, RC, Frank, Melissa, Taylor, Tim, Matthew, Jeff, and all those we say out loud or in our hearts. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of all steadfastness, you set Christ as the cornerstone and foundation of the church. Build up this congregation as living stones, that it stands in the community as a witness to your enduring faithfulness and love. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of all hope, the saints who came before us lived and died with their hearts fixed on you. We give you thanks for their faithful witness, and we wait with hope for the great day when we join their voices in praise. God of grace, hear our prayer. Gracious God, into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your unending love and amazing grace, through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen.
Let us pray. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection has opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so if the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Mm -hmm. Mighty and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord. Unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come to the table. Feast on God's abundant life for you. Given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. For those who are communing. Please be seated and follow the directions of the ushers as they come forward.
Let us rise, as able. The precious body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, evermore strengthen you and preserve you unto eternal life. Amen. Amen. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. We pray that in your mercy would strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Go forth in peace and with the courage of faith. Love God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. And love your neighbor as yourself. Whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God through him. Amen. The God of hope fill you with joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen.
Go in peace, serve the Lord.